and, and turtles came first. Turtles are about 220, 230 million years old, tortoises and the like. Sea turtles are younger than that, and so we know that sea turtles actually are evolved from land turtles. So they've got the land animal's body, and it's really a drag when you're in the water. So what they've done to make their bodies better to be in water that would, that would work better for them is they've compressed their shells, and they've made their shells much smaller. Then they've taken their, their fingers, and they've fused them together into clippers, where they've added tissue between them, so they're packed. And, and so now they can move through the water pretty well, but to propel yourself, you need big muscles. So you have these big pectoral muscles, and a smaller shell. There's no room left for a head of flippers to pull that anymore, so they have to simply go with what they've got, and that is they try to do it by camouflage, or they try to do it by swimming away from predators. So you'll find most turtles are high, sea turtles are highly camouflaged, so that way they don't have to worry about predators. Yeah? The uh, hind feet, do they do anything in the way of propelling them through the water? Not as much. They use primarily as rudders. Now, if you'll watch, if you, if you guys have been over to the aquarium and they, they have their little hatchings um, over there, you'll see when they're paddling around the tank, sometimes they'll throw their flippers up on their back and they'll scull along with their hind flippers when they're just cruising at the surface. So sometimes they'll do that when they're just sort of resting. But as a rule, most of the propulsions by their front flippers and the rear flippers are active as rudders. So the camouflage, are you going to talk about that later or no? I wasn't going to. You want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> I just briefly, like, what is it? Yeah. I mean, it's not immediately. Yeah, in the case of the camouflage, um, if you look at things like the hawksbill sea turtle, which I have some illustrations of here, that's what tortoise shell is. Tortoise shell comes from the hawksbill sea turtle. So anybody who's ever had tortoise shell knows that brightly colored pattern. And it's a coral reef dwelling turtle. So when it hunkers down in a coral reef and you have all that what looks like bright color in a comb or something, you realize it blends in very well to a reef. Most sea turtles that are open ocean turtles, like leatherbacks and sea <coughs> turtles, have a white belly and a dark back. So they have something we call counter shading. That means predators looking up see that light belly, predators looking down see that dark back. So they have some counter shading. <coughs> so that's kind of how the camouflage <coughs> works for them. The other thing is for around when Tyrannosaurus rex was here. That is that ancient. The definition of reptile being scaly skin. This doesn't appear to be scaly, is it? Yeah, good point. There's a big there's been a big argument about whether Leatherbacks has scales or not. Turns out, as hatchlings, they have scales, and those scales go away when they get to be adults. So, and they also have something called a ramphotheca, which is a sort of sort of beaky like thing, but it's it's stiff skin rather than shell like material. Yeah, reptiles are all cold blooded, or I don't like the term cold blooded. We use the term chelothermy, which means their body temperatures fluctuate with the ambient, not matched to the ambient, but in synchrony with the ambient. Remember, I said leatherbacks are 15 degrees warmer than the ambient. Um, they have scales, uh, they lay eggs, they have the amniotic egg, but everything that they need is inside of that egg. Um, and they have a three chambered heart, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a number of features that make them a reptile. The slight impressions in the sea also were very different than what we have today. So this, this turtle was created, in, or this turtle um, evolved in a time when Earth was very different, predators were very different. Sometimes when we do confusing things that we don't understand, we kind of have to put ourselves back in the mindset of, okay, what was it like 90 million years ago that's different than today? The Lenomat is the only species of sea turtles who survived the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Um, most of you guys who have kids or grandkids who are totally into dinosaurs, like my son, mm -hmm. you can tell me everything I wanted to know about dinosaurs, and that led me to a little bit more. Um, know that the dinosaurs were, went, were extinct by about 65 million years ago. And the popular, the popular theme to that is that there was a, a meteor that hit right about the Yucatan Peninsula, this piece of the Yucatan Peninsula, and it caused this tremendous global cooling. Temperatures came down and all the dinosaurs died. That's not exactly true. Um, most of the dinosaurs were extinct before the meteor ever hit. So Earth was already in a cooling phase. But that kind of put the last nail on the coffin. So <coughs> that did him in. It caused huge destruction throughout North America and South America. And it did bring the temperature of the Earth down a couple of more notches and pretty much polished things off. And it took out all of the sea turtles. It took out the Protostegas, the other family group I was mentioning. And it took out almost all the hard shell turtles, except for maybe one family group that made it through. And this is the only species 
that actually survived that extinction event, the leatherback sea turtle as, as a species. All the other sea turtles that we have up there are evolved in one little group that made it through that bottleneck um, that aren't related to these guys. Underwater, leatherbacks are one of the deepest diving care breeding vertebrates. Dive durations are usually about 15 minutes in group in life, but they will go as long as 67 minutes. And they have three times more efficiency at swimming through the water than any other sea turtle. That means they can move from here to here with, with, with three times less energy. Leatherbacks, but here's an interesting thing. All this deep diving, all this incredible underwater activity, and yet they have little bitty lungs. Very small lungs. I've got a, a dried lung that I show my students. It's about that big, about that big, about that thick. Now, for an animal that weighs this much, that's not a very big lung. A green turtle that weighs 25% of that will have the same size set of lungs. See, I ask them, why in the world? Did anybody here dive? Do we have anybody here who's ever who done? They know what decompression sickness is or case lungs disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, what that's caused by is when you're under. The air that we breathe is about 75% nitrogen. It's inert. It doesn't do anything for us or against us. When you go down deep, and the hydrostatic pressure increases on your body, more of that nitrogen is forced into your tissues, and you stabilize. It's cool. It's fine. But if you come back to the surface too quickly, that nitrogen tries to get out of your tissues, and as it tries to get out, it tends to boil, and it causes bigger and bigger bubbles, and those bubbles lodge at the, uh, at the uh, vascular constriction areas, your joints, hence the name, the bends. Because it hurts like a dickens when you get one of those air bubbles clotted, clogging. It's like a clot in your joints. Called bends. Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican uh, lobster divers that I used to know, their solution for it was to drink a fifth of rum and wake up the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how does an animal keep from getting decompression sickness? The way they do it in the case of leatherbacks is they carry almost both their oxygen blood <coughs> and their muscle almost as pure oxygen. I'm not going to get into the details of that. Um, there's a, into the, in the physiology or biomedical stuff, I can explain to them. But in this case, they carry a very small lung and they allow that lung to collapse as they dive down. At about 35 meters depth, which isn't very deep for a leatherback, that lung is completely collapsed. In fact, their trachea, the tube here, has cartilage rings around it to reinforce it so it won't collapse. So it allows the air someplace to go as it's being squeezed in their lungs. There's a very famous picture of a dolphin that they train to go down and touch a butt at about 200 meters. And they would take it to a self-portrait, take a picture of it. And when that animal's at 200 meters, its entire rib cage is collapsed skin. It's this big concave cavity. You can see all the ribs, they just mushed right in. That pressure squeezes your lungs down. The deep diving marine mammals have a flexible membrane right here, so it allows their ribs to collapse rather than break. Yeah. Other than that, same thing. Very soft belly plates, very soft plastron. By 35 meters, that lung has collapsed down. And the reason they do that is so it doesn't pick up any more nitrogen. So they, they, what they've got at the surface is what they've got down below, and they don't get saturated with nitrogen. So, yeah? Without getting into the details, presumably they have a, a high load of oxygen. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's a right. loading mechanism. Yeah, what it is actually is, is a lot of deep diving animals increase the myoglobin content of their muscle. And so instead of being used, uh, the way it works, the way your bloodstream works, folks, is that you have hemoglobin in your red blood cells. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen molecules. When that goes by a cell and it needs to transfer that oxygen into the cell for uh, using it for, for burning up sugars and stuff, um, it transfers it to another another little pigment we call called myoglobin, and it can carry one oxygen molecule. It's very small, and it carries it across the membrane into the cell. And that's its job. So that's what's going on in your cells. Uh, what marine mammals have done, and what turtles and what leatherbacks have done, is they've increased the amount of myoglobin so high that it acts as a storage medium as well as a transfer medium. And so leatherbacks have about three times the myoglobin content in their muscles of any other reptile. And so they, they, they can pull this oxygen in, it holds onto it, and it gives it up as it needs it. They also have something called a, a much higher hematocrit. You guys familiar with the term hematocrit? Some of you go to the doctor's office, he says your hematocrit is something, so on, so on. What that means is that's the volume of red blood cells you can carry per volume of blood, or percentage per volume of blood. 
And um, most terrestrial animals, it's around 40, I think, 40, 42, 45 in there somewhere.